It's time to babble the fuck on. Live from the John Lovitz Podcast Theater, it's Hollywood Babylon. With your hosts, Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman. It is, <laughs> it's Saturday night in Hollywood, man, so let's babble the fuck on. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garvin. Hey. Wow. Wow. I was, I'm a little giggly because literally <laughs> fucking 40 seconds ago, I was like, do we have time? They're like, totally. I'm like, great. Yeah. And then I heard, <laughs> and then I heard live from, I'm like, holy shit. I was coming down the hill, and as I got to the bottom of the, of the stairs, I went, a big puff. <laughs> anyway, boy, it's going to be a fucking fun show. Yes. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Not just the fucking weed thing. This is astounding. I know I'm a little late. Today, I watched The Hunger Games. Oh. Huh. Anybody else have this same experience with it? I've, I've you know, fuck, again, I, I hate to, I'm not going to turn it into like all weed humor night, but I was stoned. And I kicked back and watched this movie. Did you see it in the theater? No, I did not. You didn't see it? No. I, I ain't even fucking lying, dude. Ten minutes in, I was bawling. Like a fucking... Really? I was so emotionally invested in this movie. And Is that because people were hungry in it? And that makes you upset? I was like, I feel their pain. <laughs> Give them some food. <laughs> it's no game when you're hungry. <laughs> they should eat. Oh, it's, it's fucking beautiful. This one chick, like, steps up for her sister because her sister is going to go get... Yeah killed in this fucking, like, spoilers, like, uh, <laughs> of the, you know, these kids, they pull a few from each district, two from each district, make them fight in this quasi-futuristic world where, I don't know what the fuck we did to the government, but <laughs> the government is so mad at everyone else that they're like, every year you will, every district will give two children who will fight to the death, there will be one winner out of all, like, 24 right. fucking kids. Just like American Idol. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. guess it is. Yeah. When I think about just it, fight to the death. Yeah, yeah. man. Sing a lot. Of I songs. would watch that show in that instance if it was just like you, you sing. It goes to the top of the pyramid of who sings the best, and they're like, and now with the physical challenge. <laughs> oh, it was fucking nuts, dude. Like, like the beginning of the movie. Like, I thought it was like a kids movie because you know it's like kids in it. It's based on a kids book. Mm -hmm. My kid had to read it for school last year and shit. So I was like, this is gonna be like medicine. And then they fucking send the kids in to fight for the first time. And they put them up these fucking tubes and they all come out in this field and shit. They're counting down from fucking 30, I think, or maybe 60. It was irritatingly long. No. <laughs> Remember, I was stoned. Yeah, I, wanted yeah. to, <laughs> I wanted to get the games going and shit. And this is like the half hour mark. And finally it's like, bah, and they fucking race for all this equipment that's laid out. The mouth of the cornucopia, they call it. And I'm not even fucking shitting you, dude. I, I'm like, it's a PG-13 movie, but it was one of the most savage fucking things I've ever seen. These kids are like going for these fucking backpacks and shit, and other kids are coming to the machetes like, ah! It's fucking savage. They're killing other kids right there on the field. And, and you hear cannons going off every time a kid dies. Wow. I'm sitting there next to my wife. I'm like, I'm so in. <laughs> And it was like over two hours long. Like every movie these days now is way over two yeah, hours. Yeah, I don't care for that. I, this I didn't mind. This I was literally like, keep going, keep going. Really? I kill more kids, kill more kids. Oh, oh, it was astounding. I can't believe that this passes today for entertainment. And that kids wanted to go see this. Like we want to see each other killing each other. Because that's what they do. It's just teenagers going like, Psh, I'm the top of the food chain. Psh, now I'm the top. It's kind of like a mini, like a Highlander high school or something right. like that. <laughs> There can be only one, and you know, it, I, I don't know, I recommend seeing it. It's fucking, it's pretty tight. I was so fucking into it. I was literally yelling at the screen and shit, Ron Katniss, you know? <laughs> She's good with bow and arrow. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> Jennifer uh, Hudson? No, what's her name? Uh, <laughs> Jennifer what? Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence, yeah. Jennifer Hudson. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna have to fucking excuse me tonight, because I got a, uh, I got a, just a Chelsea Handler of a head cold. <laughs> it's a bad one so I am all kinds of looped up on fucking medicine I've got Dayquil and Nyquil and Noonquil and uh, 
Now is the perfect time to watch Hunger Games. Yeah, man. I'm all. I'm all. I'm fucking When you're done loopy. tonight, you go home, pop that shit in. It'll change your life. You'll fucking wake up the next morning and be nicer to people. Nah. I did, that's uh, not going to happen. <laughs> It'd take a lot more than one movie for that to happen to me. I don't know. It's a special film. I looked at that future and I was just like, oh, fuck. I don't want the world to be like that. So I started being nice to everybody right away. Made my wife some eggs and shit like yeah. that. This I'm just play. stocking up on bows and arrows. That's all I'm doing. Because <laughs> I will fucking take somebody out. <laughs> There's one chick who like whips fucking knives. Like these, uh, well, spo- again, spoilers. If you haven't seen it or read it. Like, well, it came well, out like eight years ago. I don't I think guess. it's... If anyone's going to see it, they've seen it. Except they, for you, apparently. I was the last one, man. Yeah. I was the holdout. They, at one point, she fucking cuts a branch down, has a... A, like a wasp nest, a hornet's nest, but they're, you know, like uh, uh, genetically altered versions of it. Tracker jackers. <laughs> a man said that. Tracker jackers. <laughs> I think I rented tracker jackers in the back of my local video store in the, in the, <laughs> the curtain section back there. <laughs> Where are the tracker jackers? <laughs> Go out in the woods and just spank it on a tree. Is that what the plot is? Yeah. <laughs> they track That's each other you... by the goo stains. <laughs> They're the tracker jackers. It's so weird, like, in terms of you hear tracker jacker and what you go with is they hunt each other with cum. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the tracker jackers, Ralph, uh, yeah. she knocks a whole fucking pot of them down. They attack fucking all these kids. One, this chick gets stung the fuck out of. She's like, well, it looks like Kev Smith on Southwest Airlines. Like, oh. <laughs> and then fucking the other chick takes the bone arrows. It's a pretty fucking brutal flick for a PG-13. They do that Dark Knight thing where, you know, like in Dark Knight, Heath Ledger used knives a lot, but they yeah. always cut away, and there was always more of an, an implication of violence than like, look at the blood. Right. Same thing here, man. But they have shots. It's so fucked up where you just see them like, ah, it's like Lord of the Flies. They're just fucking each other up, man. I was just like, I wish high school had been like this. Because yeah. I'd win the Hunger Games, Ralph. <laughs> As one game I could compete in. Well, great. There we go. It was a positive review for a movie came out three years ago. <laughs> hey, come here to Hollywood Babylon and get all the latest breaking news in show business. Jennifer Lawrence is good. We've established that. Yes. I liked her in Winter Bone, too. She's good in that. You ever see Winter Bone? Yes, I did. At first I thought you said Winter Bone. I was like, she has a bone? Yeah, um, yeah Winter Winter's Bone. Winter's Bone, yeah. Yeah, she was yeah. really awesome. Yeah, she I was like awesome to... in fucking the X-Men movie, too. Yes. Where she played young uh, Rebecca Romaine. Yeah. <laughs> Mystique. Mystique, I believe, Mystique. is the character. There it is, sorry. Yeah. Geek yeah. test. Yes. <laughs> well, good. Okay, so we've got that out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, again, I do apologize for my voice this evening. It might be a little croaky as we go on because I am uh, suffering a little bit, but I am well... Oiled. Uh, I've got uh, Dr. Jack here taking care of me. <laughs> Tonight might be Jack Kevorkian, but it's, uh, it's Dr. Jack. I've got to be honest, I don't even hear it in your voice. Well, that's good. Because I feel like shit. Really? Yeah. But the way you're talking, it's just like you'd think your voice was just like, well, perhaps he's wondering why you would shoot a man. <laughs> But you sound like Ralph. You all don't right. sound fucked up at Good all. Good news. Then let's get to the, uh, the shout-outs portion of the show. It's a shout-out with Kevin and Ralph, so get your cock out. Hey, hey. Get your cock out. Maybe uh, I wouldn't win the Hunger Games after Apparently all. you wouldn't. <laughs> You'd starve if all they were serving was cock. The shout-outs, of course, is that part of the show where we say hello. That would hello. make an awesome fucking movie, man. That, now I think about it, that's what's missing from the, the like, and fucking in order to win, put a dick in your mouth. <laughs> we'll see who's really hungry. That was Tracker Jackers. That was the movie I was talking about. That was the plot of that film. Uh, shout-outs is the segment of the show where we say hello to people who come particularly long distances or celebrating special occasions. We give them a shout-out. And tonight, I want to see if uh, Tiffany and Elliot are here. Tiffany and Elliot, are you here? Yes, and once again, I, and I mention this every week, it is a podcast, which is primarily <laughs> a, an aural experience where people need to hear uh, something. So let's try this again. Don't fucking yell at people just because you're sick, dude. Well... <laughs> It's fucking, they didn't make you sick. Well, I'm going to make them sick in about a minute. <laughs> Tiffany and Elliot, are you guys here? There we go. That Listen was to that fucking, fucking awful. Listen to that fucking forced fun they're having. 
<laughs> Y'all be out here, Herr Ralph. <laughs> you're like the fucking dude in Schindler's. You're like, tells him about the chicken. <laughs> Tiffany writes, uh, we'll be at the show celebrating my husband's birthday. His name is Elliot. He's a big fan and uses the number 37 for all his softball and basketball team numbers. There you go. It would be nice if you could send him a shout-out. This is our first time checking out the show, and I guess after my berating you, it'll be the last time as well. So. I think they left two, two minutes yeah, ago, I'm man. so sorry. Can we catch them in the parking lot and see if they want to come back in? I'll buy them a drink. Uh, by the way, if you want to give a shout-out for those listening at home, if you're going to be at the show, it's uh, hbopodcast at aol.com is the email address. People often ask us, uh, how do I get in touch with you? And I say, we said it a fucking lot. So if you don't know... <laughs> I don't want you to write it, but uh, HBO podcast at AOL. And also, if you want to relive this exact fucking moment or a few others from the show, man, on Monday morning, you go to uh, YouTube.com slash loud and you can watch uh, clips from this episode on the loud channel. It's like a YouTube. mini TV show of uh, Hollywood. A little Batman. bit, a little 10 minute taste, if you will. Just, not, just a little bit of uh, tip and neck. No fucking balls whatsoever. No, no shaft even. Totally, really. no, no shaft whatsoever. No. It's totally. just like, it's like pre-cum, really. Yeah. yeah. What? It's the pre-cum, really. Oh, I show. thought you said it was pretty cum. I was like, <laughs> is that a thing, man? Oh, again, stuffy head. As I'm having a hard time. Uh, <laughs> like, here it comes. I love you, wife. Here's my pretty cum. <laughs> it's my least favorite gesture you do, by the way. <laughs> now that I think about it, if you put pretty at the front of cum, like, it would go over a lot smoother, man. When you say cum, people are like, ew, it's all viscous and shit. But when you go pretty cum, they're like, oh, it's like a pony. <laughs> Pretty Cum sounds like a, like a song from Mary Poppins. <laughs> pretty Cum, Pretty Cum, Pretty Cum, Pretty Cum, Pretty Cum, Pretty Cum, Pretty Cum. Oi, Pretty Cum. <laughs> and then penguins come out dancing. <laughs> Dripping. <laughs> uh, how about Kyle and Amy? Are you guys here tonight? You brought wow. people with you, Kyle and Amy. <laughs> I think you terrified them with the earlier couple and shit. <laughs> like, scream. Listen, I, we don't, you don't know me, but help me out. When he says my name, can you make some noise? I'm afraid of what he'll do. Uh, Kyle writes, my girlfriend Amy is from Philadelphia. Well, God bless you, Amy. So am I. And is leaving California to move back there after two years. You coward. <laughs> She is a Batman fan, and it is a sad time, so I wish she could have Christian Bale wish her luck or convince her to stay. That would be great. So, Kyle, this is your girlfriend girlfriend? Yes. And she's leaving you? Yeah. And, and you're still taking her out on a date? You're spending money on her? <laughs> I'm just saying, there is, a, there is a questionable return on your investment there. If you're spending money on the girl and taking her out, and she's leaving. I'm still stuck on girlfriend, girlfriend. <laughs> well, Is that like, when, when there's fucking, it's way more official to you if they're girlfriend, girlfriends? Well, you say my girlfriend's like your female friend, or right. your girlfriend, girlfriend, which means you put it in. <laughs> <laughs> and only with the girlfriend, girlfriend can you pretty come. <laughs> pretty come, 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 pretty come. Oi, pretty come. <laughs> Penguins. So you're from Philadelphia, Amy, and you're a Batman fan. Give me five minutes to break up my wife and you can stay in California because that's all I need right there. Girl uh, from yeah. Philly is a Batman fan. Yeah, yeah. man, that's like... You Why are you leaving California, if I may be so bold to ask? For school. What's in Philadelphia school-wise for you? Drexel University. Drexel, yeah. they got a dragon on the sign, man. That's a cool school. It's like going to fucking Hogwarts. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Drexel School of Wizardry, absolutely, <laughs> yes. One of the big five. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Christian Bale, wishing her luck or convincing her to stay? You should stay. You should stay in California. Because you, I need someone to fight crime here in California because I'm going to retire. Because I'm going to take like eight years off and then I'm... And then I'm just going to fucking quit completely. So I want to hand over the job to someone much less qualified than me. I'll just give you the keys to the waterfall. Then I'm going to get some coffee with Catwoman. <laughs> Have a good trip back to Philadelphia, sweetheart. Give Philly my love. I miss it. That's actually not a bad rendition of the end of that movie. Spoilers, man. Bullshit movie, man. Okay. 
No. Oh, man. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. Yeah? We got to do an episode of Fat Man on Batman. We got to break that down. Because really? I, I, the more I think about it, the more it just... Ugh, just... You get mad? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I got a thorn in my paw about that one. Uh, uh, yeah. Particularly the ending the whole thing? Oh, the whole thing. The beginning. The middle, yeah. Listen, do you really? Yeah. I don't want to spoilers in case anyone hasn't seen it here, but a couple years from now we'll talk about Dark Knight Rises <laughs> like we talked about Hunger Games and you'll hear my, uh, you know, I really feel. Uh, Robert from Seattle, are you here? <laughs> Hello, Robert from Seattle. Uh, Ralph, I need you to let Kevin Smith know how upset I am. Kevin was in Seattle back in March and he tweeted afterwards he wanted to get some dicks afterwards. <laughs> we were excited when we heard this. I mean, how often can you treat a star like Kevin Smith to some dicks? <laughs> so we waited and waited for him. We were sadly disappointed because he was a no-show. I mean, here are some guys eager to treat him to some hot dicks after a long show. <laughs> I know he would have loved the dicks that we were going to give him. Something you want to talk about? <laughs> I, um, I did, in fact. There's a, a fast foodery out there. Oh! It's called Dicks. They that, make hamburgers. Well, well, that explains that everything. Is, totally. And I, uh, after a show, I said, I'm going to go get some Dicks. And, uh... As you say, reaction. after every show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only that time, people were laughing. I was like, it's not funny. <laughs> Uh, so I, I did have dicks. I just didn't go myself. Somebody else went for me. Oh, you Hollywood superstar. I just you. got off a fucking stage. I was just like, man, I'd love some dicks. They're like, let's go. I was like, I'd love it if somebody else would go <laughs> for me. Well, Robert says, now several months later, here I am in Los Angeles to see Hollywood Babylon, and it's time to make up for Kevin missing some dicks. So this time, I have to go solo and treat him to some of the old in and out Good man, that was good. Somebody's getting lucky after the show. Well, welcome, Robert. Thanks for coming all the way from Seattle. Welcome and thank you for figuring out how to cram some dick jokes into <laughs> this show. Into this show because yeah. we don't have enough. It's always been our weakness. Not enough dick jokes in this show. Uh, how about Eric Bohorquez? <laughs> Eric Bohorquez. Is that, am I saying that correctly? Yes. You sound like a fucking Bond villain. <laughs> so, WF7, what do you know about Eric Bohorquez? Well, he's a world-known assassin. <laughs> Has three nipples, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Eric that Bohorquez. Sounds that sounds that said, like, on Twitter, people keep saying, like, Bane sounds like Sean Connery. <laughs> and it kind of does when you... Try Bane. He sounds like a German. He sounds like a German Sean Connery almost. Go. Uh, like, I'm afraid you have to imagine what the fire feels like. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Hold on, let me try. Crashing this plane. <laughs> yeah, sounds a little bit. Uh, Eric writes, "You guys are the perfect dynamic duo, drunk man and puff cloud." <laughs> It would be a good comic book. Uh, bringing uh, my brother and my wife, Lucy, to see you guys for the first time live. Due to the fact that I talk about you guys constantly, they are both thoroughly convinced I want you both inside me. Why can't people just be fans? <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you go get some dicks with Robert and <laughs> tell me afterwards? Please, in your Al Pacino voice, could you convince my wife that I'm not gay just because I talk about you guys all the time? It does not mean I want both of your penises in my mouth at the same time. At the same time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Taking turns. Let's be civilized yeah, about this. Yeah, yeah. That's code. Ooh, ah. Oh. <laughs> Arik Bahorkis. Arik Bahorkis. Ooh. Ooh, ah. Eric Bohorquez. I'm just gonna keep saying that. Cause that's fun to say. Ooh, Eric Bohorquez has a great ass. Ooh, ooh, ah. All right. Uh, how about Rabble or Rabel? Rabble or what's that? Rebel. The only None one, of the above. The only one you didn't choose. Rebel. Are you from the planet Krypton? 
So, Rabel, my only son. <laughs> my name is Rabel, and I've been a huge Kevin Smith fan since my mother showed me the Clerks cartoon when I was about six or seven. Child services, hello. <laughs> I like that lady. Although she never let me watch his other work till I was older, I instantly fell in love with the comic genius that is Kevin Smith. So much so that I was willing to wait in line for about eight hours at the age of seven to meet Kevin at the opening of his secret stash comic book shop here in Southern California. Yeah. I have enclosed a picture of me and a younger Kevin Smith. I think we've got that photo here someplace. Ah, oh, look at that. Oh. Look at Kevin and Rebel. If Kevin doesn't remember me, I'll be heartbroken because I spent the whole time drawing Star Wars and Batman pictures for him and his daughter Harley when I was in line. He has always been the Adam West to my young Ralph Garman. Well, how about that? I want to thank you both for making a show like this possible that helps so many people, myself included, make it through dark times in our lives. Well, Rebel, thanks for coming and thanks oh for the nice words. This dude, you're ankling to be angling. I guess it would be ankling is leaving. <laughs> yes. Angling is trying. Angling to be my fucking young ward, dude. <laughs> I could have my own Robin. <laughs> look at him. That's, that doesn't look super heroic. It looks, <laughs> looks like fucking I'm about to meet that dude who's just like, so. Chris Hansen? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Let me read you from some of your emails. <laughs> Are you Boy Toucher 37? <laughs> so I heard you liked my cartoons. <laughs> I'd like to do some painting on you with pretty cum. <laughs> pretty cum, pretty cum, pretty cum. Oi, pretty cum. Is Bram here tonight? Bram, yeah. Bram, Amelia, Jim, and Steve. Where's Jim, by the way? Raise your hand, Jim. Jim, G Y M. Jim. <laughs> Is that right, man? That's your spelling of it, right? That's not how you're actually spelling. That's your, your spelling. spelling of it, yeah. So you walk around as J-I-M. Yes, I do. Yeah. Based, on, yeah, based on that reaction, you better, man. <laughs> Why would people get so uptight about that? Like, you fucking jerk. Because that's fucked up. That's fucked up. That's kind of cute. It's I never thought about up. it before, yeah, man. Up. If somebody's like Jim, I'm going to put that in the script. What's your name? Jim. Oh, like James? No, like Gymnasium. Yeah. <laughs> My parents were health nuts. <laughs> Copyright Kev Smith and Brom. <laughs> we're all here uh, all the way from Toronto, Canada. Well, welcome. You know, we're going to be in Canada oh. next week. You could have stuck around. Yeah, everywhere. man. When is Saved that? you when the airfare. We're going to Ottawa. Is it next week? We're going to Ottawa, yeah. Next, next weekend. Next weekend, Ottawa, Babylon. That's for sure. You can come see us here, man. Yeah. Also, diplomatic immunity. No. <laughs> I'm hoping you can help Steve, who's in dire need of some laughs. You see, L.A. seems to hate him. That's funny. I thought they hated Jim, but no, apparently they hate Steve. In four days, Steve has been spit on and accosted by a crazy hobo in Venice. <laughs> we don't call them hobos anymore, first of all. They're just bums. He was egged on Melrose. <laughs> Shit, Steve. Is that what they're calling him? My days, we called it blown. No, he, he actually had an egg thrown at him. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh. That was something all the kids were saying. I got fucking egged last <laughs> night, man. <laughs> fucking dozen. <laughs> we think it has something to do with the fact that Steve's earlobes are ridiculously large and gooey. Show Everyone wants to see Steve's earlobes now. He's almost, the dude there? They're almost jello like in consistency. Therefore, only the Jello master himself, Bill Cosby, can comfort Steve. Aww. Can Bill please tell Steve that everything will be okay and that L.A. is not a hellhole? Thanks, Bram. Let me tell you about Los Angeles. The city of angels came from first First of all, you don't go to Venice with the hobos. The bad stuff takes in town. Venice is a shithole. So he's staying out of Venice. 
And don't go on Melrose because they will throw an egg at you. <laughs> so you're right, it is a hellhole. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> Bill Cosby just confirmed it. Uh, Mark and Shannon, are you guys here? Mark and Hello, welcome. I love you guys so much. Can't believe my awesome, sexy husband, Mark, bought tickets for us to see your show for my 40th birthday. I was so excited to be in your presence, and I was hoping you'd do me the honor of celebrating with a little David Bowie. Well, of course. I love both of you guys so much, and if it wasn't married to an amazing man, I would jump you both. Love, Shannon. Maybe we're married to amazing women. Yeah. Maybe Mark, her husband's a big cock block. That's what I think. <laughs> if it wasn't for Mark, we'd be getting a little tail. Totally, today. right? We'd be doing oh, the wobbly shows. H with Shannon. Yeah, man. Welcome to Babble Inn. <laughs> P.S. Please tell Mark he's getting a kick-ass blowjob for this. Wow. <laughs> You're getting your ass kicked, Mark. <laughs> getting blown, and then she kicks you right in the ass. Worst blowjob ever. Uh, okay. Um, sorry about the cold again, but little Bowie, uh, happy birthday for uh, Shannon's 40th. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you, Shannon. Happy birthday to you, Shannon. Happy birthday to you, Shannon. You don't look 40 years old. You look like 39. Maybe 39 and a half. But you don't look 40 years old. No, you really, really don't. Happy birthday to you, Shannon. Happy birthday to you, Shannon. Happy birthday to you, Shannon. And the love go past. Happy birthday. It's a sweaty bit, man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's such a workout. I should really just do that at home. That'd be amazing. If you called me every hour on the hour, all right. and I picked up the phone, get ready, James. I pick up the phone, and all I hear is this, hello? Time for you to work out, Kevin. Thanks, Ralph. Time for you to work out, Kevin. Let's get your heart rate up there. <laughs> Stop it's it. time for you to Stop work it. I'm out. I'm fucking winded again. <laughs> So maybe not every hour, but no, every maybe like not. six hours or something yeah. like that. Once a week. <laughs> Once a week. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was thinking of something before. I was happy to do the dance, but as you started to sing before, I was like, let's do a different version of David Bowie. Happy birthday song, right. Bowie music, right. Bill Cosby singing. <laughs> James? Happy birthday to you, Shannon. Happy birthday to Happy birthday to you, Shannon. You forgot it's your birthday, pudding pop. <laughs> I'm sick tonight. You're gonna make me jump through hoops, really? That has to be. I my own performing android or something like that. <laughs> we also get emails from all around the world, and we'd like to address them as well. Ain't no drag. Garmin's got an email back. <laughs> Featuring Kevin's reactions. Remember Steve the Pool Man from last week? Steve the Pool <laughs> yeah, Man? Yeah, man. The singing pool he man? He sang to his lady. And she, like, literally wept. She did. And she did more than that, apparently, according to this email. Uh, Ralph and Kevin, thank you so much for one of the greatest nights of my life. I did not get a call back from the voice audition on Sunday, but I did get sex on Saturday night, thanks to you guys. And no, Kevin, I didn't get the balloon knot. That's from Steve the Pool Man, so. Why does he assume I would ask about the balloon he knot? Is, you're the ass guy. But it's so weird that the dude's just like, I had the greatest night of my life. I had sex. Yeah. <laughs> the girl's 20 years high. younger than him. I guess, yeah. it's true. This next email comes from uh, Isabel. My husband and I love listening to your show. It's our two-year wedding anniversary coming this Tuesday but it's our first time actually celebrating it together. Last year, he was deployed when our one-year anniversary rolled around, so this year, it's very special for us. 
It would mean a lot and surprise my husband, Dave, who's a big fan, if Ralph could give us advice for a long and happy marriage as TV's Batman, Adam West. Thanks for all the laughs, Isabel. Well, Isabel, I believe you've already mastered the secret to a perfect marriage. Spend half of your time apart. Always worked for me and Bert. <laughs> yeah, right, like they weren't. Okay. Uh, this email comes from Jason from the Twin Cities. And now this is why I like having the email portion, because long-time answers are provided for questions that I didn't even know people were asking. Here we go. Fair enough. Uh, thanks for all the free funny. Ralph, whenever you mention uh, everyone's favorite parent trap star turned coke whore, you always scream, Little O'Hare! with an affected voice that sounds a little like a weird Adam Sandler. You explain everything on the show. You've explained the creepy clown bit 25 times. <laughs> but I've never heard an explanation about why you use that voice for her. What's that all about, Jason from the Twin Cities? And I realize I've never, I've never brought that up before. Okay. It stems from an old video, which features a drunken P. Diddy. Puff Daddy, Dua Diddy. <laughs> He is drunk off his ass, and he's talking about the fact that he was a spokesperson for proactive acne solution. Right. And after he did it, Lindsay Lohan and Jessica Simpson also did commercials for proactive. And it makes him very upset. And he's drunk off his ass talking into the, uh, to the, the video camera, bitching about how they sort of followed his lead. And he's very drunk, and when he says the words, Lindsay Lohan, that's how he says it. <laughs> and I always thought it was very funny that he pronounced it in a drunken, slurring way like that. And I just sort of adopted that years ago, and I never really explained to anybody why I go, Lindsay Lohan! <laughs> but I brought in the video so you can see for yourself the origin of Lindsay Lohan. Here's a, here's a drunk P. Diddy, as he was known then, talking about uh, uh, proactive. Y'all know damn well, y'all know damn well that Lindsay Lohan and Jessica Simpson was not using no proactive. So did it wall proactive. Now, y'all into skincare products. Now, now y'all think it's official. Well, ha, I got a secret. I was up on proactive for seven years. That's why I got the silky smooth cocoa butter skin. So Lindsay, Jessica, you're late. You should have followed my pretty ass from the beginning. But now you're late. There you go. There's uh, <laughs> Lady Lohan. Now, now, Lady Lohan. So that's where that comes from. Mark Gillard of Palm Coast, Florida writes, uh, last weekend, I was driving to dinner with my sister and boyfriend. I put on some Hollywood Babylon for the car ride. Neither my sister nor her boyfriend had ever heard the phrase rusty wagon wheel before. <laughs> Fast forward a half an hour, we're sitting at our table at a restaurant ordering drinks. My sister's boyfriend, smart ass that he is, told the waiter he wanted a rusty wagon wheel. <laughs> they got a laugh from the waiter, but also it led to a lengthy discussion at our table about what a rusty wagon wheel would consist of. I think you should ask other HBO fans to come in with their own recipes and send them in. The winning recipe would become the real rusty wagon wheel served at the John Lovitz Podcast Theater. Yeah. Thanks for everything. Babble the fuck on. I think that's a great idea. I like it. I'm not a drinker, but I support it. So send in your recipes for what you think a rusty wagon wheel would be to uh, HBO Podcast at AOL.com. We'll, we'll get the best of them. We'll make them. And then we'll have like a taste test one week. I'll bring them all up here and we'll taste five of them or something. We'll pick a winner. How about Yoo-hoo that? and vodka. Do I win? I think that's what we call the slippery pedophile. <laughs> Once again, let me read some of your emails. Are you you who 37? <laughs> I'd like to give you a drink. It's delicious, chocolatey, and will get you very relaxed. I was uh, still laughing inside from earlier when you called me Boy Toucher 37. <laughs> That would I, be your creepy pedophile email address. But I mean, don't you think like I'd try to hide it and be like, 
fucking Star Wars fan 37 or something? When you put Boy Toucher right away, the government's like, we should keep an eye on this guy. <laughs> that's, that's why you got caught by Chris Hansen. <laughs> right. I'm not good at You're it. You're not good at it at all. Uh, last week, we introduced a new TV show Kevin's very excited about. It's going to be... <laughs> Gonna be on NBC this fall. <laughs> Start. <laughs> the meds are kicking in, man. <laughs> Starring John Travolta. <laughs> As the gay ghost. <laughs> this fall on NBC, John Travolta is the gay ghost. <laughs> S. Macronini, one of our uh, listeners, sent in the first ad, apparently, that NBC's running for this. Here's the, uh, the new print ad for the new show coming up this fall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. <laughs> and that leads us into this week's creepy clown time. Can we have a little creepy clown time music? <laughs> creepy clown time? Creepy clown time. Alright. This week's uh, creepy clown time comes from Totsky, listener Totsky. Uh, last week, the appearance of the gay ghost had me pissing my pants with laughter. The only way to top it, gay ghost creepy clown time. <laughs> Babble the fuck on Totsky. All right, this is John Travolta as the gay ghost doing the creepy clown, putting on his makeup for Kevin Smith. It's so weird. Do, do, do. I thought you forgot the boo. Uh, I would never forget the boo. <laughs> oh, I'm going to listen to this show because I'm not going to remember any of it tonight. <laughs> Every week we say goodbye to some people in show business who uh, deserve a special send-off as they slough off this mortal coil. It's known... Fucking comedy show, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's known as the Tinseltown Stiffs. And now another edition of... Tinseltown Stiffs. They will be missed. Do you have a Hollywood mm. helper tonight? Yeah, yeah, Hollywood helper tonight. You have one as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We should talk before the show sometime. Probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Helen Gurley Brown, the famed Cosmopolitan editor from Cosmopolitan Magazine. Of course, you ladies, I'm sure you all subscribe because how else would you learn 27 mind-blowing sex tricks to keep him around? Sex tricks? Sex tricks. You know what I meant. <laughs> I like to have sec and pretty cum. <laughs> pretty cum, pretty cum, pretty cum, pretty cum, pretty cum. <laughs> Sex, pretty come. <laughs> Sex in the Single Girl was the name of her 1962 uh, book. That was her big claim to fame. That brought her a lot of notoriety. And then she started putting together Cosmo magazine, which be basically became a Playboy magazine for women. From 1965 to 1997, she was the editor of that magazine. Then she sold it for a lot of money. She died at 90 years old this week. Although uh, the New York Times said in their obituary, she was 90, although parts of her were considerably younger. <laughs> Which I think is a shitty thing to write in the New York Times about something. It's weird. She was married to David Brown, without whom we wouldn't have Jaws. That's right. And many other movies, but Big Jaws. Big time producer. Which, they just came out with a Blu-ray. Have you seen it? You can't get it anywhere. It's like selling out left and right. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. I guess in like Best Buy, they had like a special case for it and shit. I just got one off of Amazon, like a regular standard Blu-ray edition. But it's fucking, the transfer's beautiful. Looks like they shot the film like not too long ago. And there's an extra on the, you know, there have been many documentaries about about the making of Jaws, but they have one on the Blu-ray. I think it's on the second disc. Maybe it's the first disc, but it's uh, called The Shark is Still Working. Yeah, I've seen that. And it's that. a documentary, it's like I talked about a few years ago, I think, and uh, I had a copy for a long time. It is so good. It was made by fans, 
about Jaws. So it covers every aspect. Like the fucking, the guy who did the voiceover, Percy Rodriguez, who was like, there is a beast in the sea. You know, that guy, uh, the dude who painted the poster, fucking everybody. They got Roy Scheider before he died, Peter Benchley before he died. If you were remotely interested in Jaws, this documentary is mind-bendingly good. Not only is it a really great documentary about a movie, it's one of like the 20 best documentaries I've ever seen. So much love and attention to details put into it. So if you see a copy of the Jaws Blu-ray. Definitely watch Jaws, of course, but uh, pop, uh, pop in the other disc, or if it's on the same disc, I can't remember, and check out The Shark is Still Working. It is so mind-bendingly good, man. It covers everything. True fans made it. Also uh, passed away this week, Ron Palillo, who played Horshack on Welcome Back, Cotter. Passed ooh, away. ooh, ooh. That was his thing. That was your Horshack. Well, no, it wasn't mine, but that was his thing. He, he would go, ooh, ooh, Mr. Cotter, Mr. Mr. Cotter. Mr. Cotter. That's not bad. Do it. Club, club, oh, 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 Mr. Carter. <laughs> yes, that's right. That was his big laugh. Suffered a heart attack at the age of 63 this oh, week. Oh, fucking bummer, man. Yeah, he, uh, he had a hard, to- had hard go of it after Horseshack. That character was such, I know it sounds crazy, but it was such a big hit back in the day when there was only three networks. That, mm. that show blew up. Of course, John Travolta got his start on that show, but his character was on lunchboxes and T-shirts. He was like the Fonz, you know, in terms of the success of that character. He could not get away from the typecasting of that character. After and he was over. like one of the first, if you look at the history of like TV characters, he was like uh, the first to kind of distill it, and whether he consciously did it or not, to like a catchphrase and a fucking a, a, war, a wardrobe piece, article of clothing. Yeah. Like they say people like Urkel later on were made in the same exact mold. He was the first sure. geek TV star, really. Very much, yes. Um, after 79, when the show went off the air, he had some bit parts here and there on the A-Team and, and Love Boat and that kind of stuff, but later went into teaching acting, and he was teaching in Florida when he had the heart attack. He was rushed to the hospital, by the way, of his, uh, he, he was a gay gentleman, and his partner, Joseph Graham rushed him to the hospital. They were together for 41 years. That's a fucking, yeah, man. And in, that's 41 years uh, gay couple. That's in, gay in years. Straight yeah. years. Yeah. I'd be like 102 or yeah. something. It's very impressive. I'm so glad there's some people out there who want to keep the gays from being married because you can't have that sort of the devotion for 41 years to one person. It just makes the rest of us look bad. So please, by all means, don't let the gays get married. <laughs> Huge bucket of wind, this guy. Man. Here's a little taste. If you've never seen Welcome Back, Cotter, here's a little taste from the, uh, the first episode of Welcome Back, Cotter, where we first meet uh, Arnold Horshack. Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm Arnold Horshack. <laughs> Arnold Horshack. Arnold Horshack, the last. Why the last, Horshack? Because uh, after they made me, they broke the mold. (laughs) So weird. (laughs) Huge bucket of win. He, uh, I read an article this week where they talked about like the laugh was all him. Oh yeah, he made it It just said uh, he says what he said just now, and then it just said he laughs. And that was the laugh he brought to it, and that was the laugh that became his like defining trademark. Now. Absolutely. Uh, for those of you who missed, and also with Helen Gurley Brown, huge bucket of fucking win. Oh, I should yeah, point out, massive hey, bucket of win. Hey, Kev. I'm sorry. Lord. Uh, yes, says I. I'm sorry. I, I had to add to that. Uh, that was actually the laugh. I read uh, an article as well about it, and the laugh was uh, a kind of a tribute to his father, who uh, I think was had passed from lung cancer or something to that effect. So he kind of modeled that laugh after his father's kind of wheezing as a kind of a tribute to him. Right on, yeah, man. Yeah. DJ James with some fucking information. The more you know. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Well done. Anybody else have any facts about Horseshack they'd like to share <laughs> before we get on with the rest of the show? Uh, he was a huge fan of the pretty cum. <laughs> If you're a comic book fan, you were sad to hear that artist Joe Kubert passed away this week. He uh, was a legend, legend, legend in legend, the industry. Yes. Uh, probably and best gave birth to legends as well. Well, not personally, but helped in the process. He started the first himself. like comic book artist school, really yes. the accredited one in the United States in 1976. Started his own academy. Best known for his work with Tarzan, I guess, was a big character that he drew. I think of Hawkman. All Hawkman. The time. Let's throw up some Hawkman, by the way. A little uh, Joe's Hawkman. 
Yeah, that's great stuff. And uh, Sergeant Rock, of course, was his character. Are they fighting gentlemen ghosts? Yeah, they sure are. Fuck, yeah. that just makes me want to read a comic right there. Yeah, it man. does. <laughs> gentleman Ghost is one of the worst fucking villains because... <laughs> Look at him, man. He's a big white tuxedo. Yeah, and he's yeah. a fucking ghost. Like, yeah. I could go with a lot of shit. If you're like, hey, man, these guys have wings and a big maces, I'll go. I'm like, that could be happening. Right. But when you show me the ghost with no head and shit, I'm right. like, I'm out. This is bullshit, man. <laughs> like, it's fucking Superman. You know, remember when I was a kid, I saw Superman, and at the end of the Superman movie, he's mad. Spoilers. He's <laughs> mad. Fucking. <laughs> 1978. 30 year spoilers. He's mad because Lo Lois got killed and he missed it and shit. So right. he goes backwards around the earth to change its rotation and then that turns back time. Yeah. And I remember that movie came out, let me see, 77 was Star Wars, 78 was Superman. So I'm eight years old. Even at eight years old, I was just like, Superman can't do this. This is horseshit because <laughs> Superman can't do this. And my father was just like, Superman can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Schooled you. He did, man. He put it on Front Street. He was just like, don't be a dick, Kevin. <laughs> Let the internet do that in 30 years. And I was like, right on, Dad. You know, a lot of people misunderstand that final scene. And they think that Superman is turning the Earth backwards on its axis. But in reality, what Superman is doing is making, reaching maximum velocity where he's traveling faster than, than light. Yeah. And then Einstein said, if you can break that speed, you could actually travel through time. So we're watching the world spin backwards only because Superman is traveling backwards in time. He's not really turning the planet separately. I don't know what movie you saw, Ralph, but <laughs> <laughs> the one I saw, the Earth went backwards and... Motherfuckers are like bruh, 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 doing this shit. Right. Fucking the We're damn watching guy time rebuild. go backwards because well, I, he's traveling I, through If time. that was the intention, yeah. I don't think it was represent. Listen to me, fucking like talking about another director. But I <laughs> that hack Richard Donner. <laughs> yeah, I just visually, I don't think that was represented. Yeah, to me, it was literally you turn the fucking that, yeah. earth backwards and shit yeah. for as many years as I saw it ago. What is that fucking 1978? What now is it? Uh, 20, 34 years. 40 ago? years. 34 years. Ago? Almost. Yeah, yeah. For 34 years, man, it's never been what you said. Yeah. So it'll never be that to me. <laughs> I can't change what 34 fucking years. That would be so like me. No new like information like, for you is what no, you're saying ever. No, never, oh, man. Okay. All right. Yeah, no yeah. change. We All fear right. it. <laughs> and while we're talking about Superman, his mom passed away this week. Phyllis Thaxter, who played Ma Kent in the 1978 movie Superman died at the age of 92 this week. She had been an actress since the 30s. She was on Broadway in the 30s, worked for MGM in the 40s, did television in the 50s and 60s. Had to stop in the 50s for a while because she had polio. Got better, started working again. And then um, Donner cast her as Ma Kent in Superman. I brought in a little taste of that film, the one we were just talking about, Superman. Probably uh, my favorite moment of the early opening of that film when they discover the baby Kal-El in that rocket ship. Well, this ain't the baby dick scene. No, it? it's not the baby dick scene. Because <laughs> that'd be creepy if you're Don't like, be you know creepy. what my favorite scene in Superman is? <laughs> I'm Batman fan 66. I'd like to see more <laughs> baby dick, if you don't mind. I'm Chris Hansen. You're free to go. <laughs> Here is uh, Ma Kent trying to talk Pa Kent and the fact that they should adopt this new alien baby they just found by the side of the road. Here's a little scene from Superman. Uh, the first thing we got to do when we get home is find out who that boy's proper family is. He hasn't got any. Not around here anyway. Martha, are you thinking what I think you're thinking? We could say he's the child of my cousin in North Dakota. And just now often. Oh, Martha. Jonathan, he's only a baby. Martha, now you saw how we found him, you know. Martha, Clark Kent, are you listening to what I'm saying? <laughs> Still get chills when I yeah. hear that music. Oh, that makes me want to. I almost cried. Yeah. 
That makes me want to watch that, but that movie holds up. He is so fucking good, Christopher Reeve, as Clark Kent and Superman. Yeah. Just like, when you think of the modern day superhero, like, you know, you think about, he must have friends. Every week we also like to talk about some celebrities who were able to get out of their own heads, who were able to get out of their own egos and to help someone else. It's a segment we call Hollywood Helpers. Ooh-ah, ooh-ah. No margaritas. Ooh-ah, ooh-ah. Hollywood Helpers. Oh, oh, oh. Hollywood Helpers. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh-ah, ooh-ah. Oh, oh, oh. Hollywood Helpers. Come on now. Hollywood, Hollywood Helpers. Don't do that to the Hollywood Helpers. <laughs> Lick your nipples. <laughs> This week's Hollywood Helper, it sounds like you've got one of your own to I do, uh, to I want to throw it in. I just read an article that I thought was really nice, but you go first. My Hollywood Helper this week is Dexter star James Remar. He plays uh, Harry, Dexter's dad on that show, who mm. visits him as a ghost from beyond. He was in uh, 48 Hours, too. Yeah, he was the he bad was. guy. Uh, he was... Uh, Gans. Gans, yeah. yeah. We yeah. ain't brothers, we ain't partners, we ain't friends. But Gans gets away with my money, you can be sorry you ever met me. I'm already sorry. <laughs> That's my review of 48 Hours <laughs> in 20 seconds. Listen here, convict. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Billy Bear. Billy Bear. That was the Indian that was with uh, yes. Gans, remember? I remember. Uh, James Remar used to be an EMT before he became an actor. He was outside a supermarket this week here in Los Angeles and saw a homeless man sitting out front who had a massive bloody head wound. Now, most of us, given that situation... Would just judge him. Yes. <laughs> would say, ew, bloody homeless dude. Yeah. Blech. James Remar went inside the supermarket, bought bandages and antiseptic, oh. came back out and cleaned and dressed the man's wound. That's cool. And didn't do it for press, didn't do anything, just walked away. TMZ happened to catch it because I guess they were following him around with cameras and they, they saw him do it. But uh, he said after the fact it was just the right thing to do and he taught the guy how to keep it clean and keep it from being infected and, and gave the couple, guy, guy a couple bucks and went on his way. I like that. That's a pretty man. cool thing that to do. That is a very cool thing. Yeah. Give it up for James Remar. And then Michael C. Hall came and murdered the homeless man. So <laughs> Sadly, it was all for naught. But uh, still, a nice gesture on James Remar's part. <laughs> he was cleaning that dude up and suddenly his dark passenger was like, kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, for, let me throw one out there. I don't have the article, but I, I just read it. The, uh, um, Jay Leno took a massive pay cut to keep the Tonight Show uh, staff in, in place. They lost about 20 people or 25 people in a network cutback. Comcast owns NBC, and I guess they cut a bunch of staff from the Tonight Show in order to keep as many as they could. Leno apparently took like a deep, deep salary cut. Um, which I thought was kind of sweet to keep the, his staff employed and shit. So I say he is a Hollywood helper. He's somebody people always shit on and whatnot. They're like, he's fucking not funny. He's your grandma's comic and shit like that. And after the Conan shit a few years ago, people always shit in a dude's mouth. But yeah. he's, I've, I've dealt with him for years, and he's always been a nice guy, classy guy that cares about people and whatnot. And I thought that was a really nice move because he could have just been like, well, they're cutting jobs, people, sorry, and kept his money. But he's always been the first to say. He's like, he makes that... Tonight Show check, he puts it in the bank, and he lives off of his live appearance money, which is e almost equal to what he makes on the show, I guess. So right. I thought it was a cool thing. He deserves props for that, you know? In this economy, anything lose... you do to help someone else keep their job is a good thing. A lot of people losing jobs in general in this economy, and, and in this business, too. You know, there's, it's harder and harder to find a movie that actually shoots in Los Angeles. Production keeps going elsewhere, so yeah. it's nice that he kept some jobs here. Anyway, yeah. he is a Hollywood helper as well. It stings a little bit that Tonight Show's going to stay on the air, though, because of him. That's a, that, it's a little bit of a sting. Why? Why? I'm just saying. Cause you don't like it? <sighs> no, it's not Woo. you? Woo. I, 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 I don't know, man. It's, it seems to be, even in, though it's not Johnny Carson, and Johnny Carson's been gone for a while, it seems to be kind of the standard. The, the, the way that the shows are rated in late night is in increments of about 15 minutes, I think even five minutes at some mm -hmm. points. And they, had, they broke that show down to me once because, you know, it's the biggest one in late night. And so, uh, you know, you figure like when they say, hey man, six million people watch it or something. You're like, wow, six million people are gonna watch me when I'm on The Tonight Show. And that's not the case at all. <laughs> when the show begins at 11.30, that's when they have their biggest number. Everybody's tuned in to watch the monologue. Do you know why? 
because a lot of people aren't news readers during the day, and so they figure if they watch the monologue, they'll have a general overview of the news presented in a light, entertaining way. They know that's it out in 10 minutes, and they can be going to sleep, and that's generally what happens. They watch that show up to the monologue. As soon as the monologue ends, the audience drops off by almost half. Wow. Um, and that's the desk piece, and that's normally like jaywalking or something like that. Then after the desk piece, before the first guest comes, the audience drops again by almost half. So by the time the first guest hits there, they got what at that point? Half and then half. So what, three quarters of the show or two quarters of the audience is missing? Yes. I'm not good at math. Um, <laughs> by the time they get to the second guest, which is where I usually fucking sit. There's no one watching. My mother's watching. No. That's it, man. <laughs> so people tune out. And this, this is interesting. The, the music is the lowest rated portion of that show, so much so that they don't even count like the last five to 10 minutes of the show in the ratings. Um, they just kind of go like the show ends at 12.45 or whatever time it is. They don't count, it's the, isn't that weird? Like you would imagine the music people tune in for, but that's, that's not it at all. By that point, most people are just sleeping. So anyway, there's an overview of The Tonight Show. And still to this day, that monologue, as it was in Carson's day, is as it is today, is still the monologue that most people tune in. And when I say most people, dude, I mean middle America. I mean, sure, like, yeah. not fucking the coast. And here in this town, people are like, nobody watches that show. But somebody watches that show because there's a big number. Yeah. So anyway, I'm So sorry. a lot of people are hearing, <laughs> Who's that, Cartman? <laughs> <laughs> is that your fucking Leno? Yeah, that's all I hear when I see him. When I watch the, the monologue, all I hear is... <laughs> it sounds like fucking... Ahoy, ta -toy, ta -toy, ta -toy. He is, he's a leprechaun. He's a leprechaun with a giant chin. Every week we take a look at some A-list actors who give in less than A-list performances with the exquisite acting segment. To be or not to be that is the question. Welcome to the world of exquisite acting with Ralph Garman and Kevin Smith. <laughs> this week it's a return engagement of uh, Jean-Luc Picard from Star Trek The Next Generation. Patrick Stewart stars in this episode of Chain of Command is the name of the episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. This comes from Sven in Germany. I think it's funny Sven is from Germany. He should be in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. Pork, pork, pork. Um... Picard in this episode is being captured and tortured by the Cardassians. <laughs> Not the Kardashians. <laughs> the Cardassians. Is that right? Yeah, it was before we knew who and the Cardassians were. And it's funny because it's card ass, A S S. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's being tortured and forced to, uh, they're trying to control his mind. And so they have a number of lights in this, in this room that he's being tortured in, four lights. And they keep trying to get him to say that there's a different number of lights. They know once they can crack him and make him say whatever they want him to say, mm -hmm. they will have twisted his mind and, and their, his free will will be gone. Right. But uh, Jean-Luc Picard will have none of it. And they keep asking him uh, how many lights there are, and he does it in a very Shakespearean way in this scene. Just overacting out the asshole, really. <laughs> For your enjoyment, here's uh, Patrick Stewart telling you how many lights are in this room with the Kardashians from Star Trek. There are four lights! Do we not have a picture for a reason, or can we, can we show that again? It's, it's funnier if you look at it. <laughs> That's what you say to all the girls. <laughs> I'll just move on. Moving on, moving on. But man. let me know if all the videos are going to be like that for the rest of the night, or else I won't, uh, I won't uh, go. Hey, 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 sure, when you got Horseshack facts, I can't shut you up, but now you're not giving me nothing. <laughs> James, don't fuck with him. He's sick tonight, man. You know how he is when he's sick. He's I a fucking need some diva. Info, man. I'm just looking up like a, like a douchebag and no one's <laughs> saying anything to me. Go on to, well, let's go to the next video. <laughs> this is a segment we call... A segment? Sigmund the Sea Monster and Johnny and Scott are friends. <laughs> this is a segment. All of a sudden, I'm Dean Martin now. Oh, hold on a second. I got a segment for everybody. 
I've got a segment called Shit That Should Not Be, Kevin. You got it. And now for shit we should not see. Here's some shit that should not be. This is stuff that happens in mainstream Hollywood movies and TV shows that just should not have been left in, with the hundreds of people who get eyes on these things before they reach an audience. You think somebody would say, well, right, that right there is shit that just should not be. But they don't, and it, and it gets out. And keeping with a the sci-fi theme like we did Star Trek in the previous clip, this is from Logan's Run, a classic film from 1976. This is like the original fucking Hunger Games, this movie. That's right, yeah. Uh, it's an idyllic world they live in, if you've never seen the film. Yeah, there's no war, there's no pestilence, there's no, there's no hunger. There's no Hunger Games. It's a That's perfect a world. That's a sad world, Ralph. It's a perfect world, except no one lives beyond 30. Bum, bum, bum. At 30, they send you to Carousel. And Carousel is the promise of everlasting life. If you can rise beyond the top of Carousel, you can live past 30. But as, as we see, no one does. You know why? Because they're killing everybody. The government's killing everybody at 30 because they can't afford to, 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 to feed to those feed people. To feed them anymore, yeah. So here's a scene from Logan's Run. Uh, Michael York plays Logan. He's running in this film. <laughs> And uh, he takes on the guys, what they call a Sandman. These are the people who catch the runners. And he's got a gun, and he's shooting people, and he's trying to escape with Jenny Auguter, who's just so fucking hot in this movie. And um, they're shooting people left and right, and in the background, you'll see an extra. Now, apparently, something went horribly wrong. Uh, this extra was supposed to be on fire, I guess, and go screaming through the background of the, of the, of the shot. But the, only his ass is on fire. <laughs> And it looks really silly for a guy in an orange jumpsuit with his ass on fire to go running through a scene, screaming like a girl. And no one said, well, fuck, we can't leave that in. That looks like hell. But they did. Here's your scene from Logan's Run with a guy with his ass on fire. And we'll show it a couple times in case you miss it the first time through. We're not gonna, they're not gonna watch that. That was, a, that was a good setup right there. Well, go to YouTube and check it out yourselves. And let's pass around some laptops so everyone can take a look at it. So let's just say no more, uh, no more videos tonight, no more pictures, no more... I don't know what happened. I lost my video feed. Okay. How about pictures? Think we'll have pictures? All right, let's move on to the next segment that we like to call Kev In. This is a segment where we take Kevin, Kevin Smith, that is, and we insert him into, um, into situations you wouldn't necessarily be in. Oh, it sounded erotic for a second. No, no, it's a... <laughs> It's just you and funny pictures, basically. Okay. It's called Kevin. What's Kev in today? Something crazy or awesome or gay. And by gay, we mean homosexual. Like maybe some dudes, but what's Kev in? What's Kev in this week? Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, keep those coming. <laughs> uh, the three new Kevin pictures that were sent in this week by various fans, Tom in Somerville, Massachusetts, said whenever he sees Kevin, he thinks of... The movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. He thinks of Kevin uh, being the space baby at the end, the fetus that, uh, that Kira D'Elia sees at the end of the film that, that promises everlasting life that goes on and on through the cosmos. Here's Kevin. You didn't know this Kevin was an actor early on in his life. He played the space baby back in the, uh, the late 60s. Here you go. Here's Kevin as the space baby from 2001, A Space Odyssey. If you don't show me that picture, I'm going to go up there and just throttle you. I'm serious. We got no picture, huh? We got no... Nothing, nothing visual. Wah, wah. Video, no signal. How about just still pictures? We got no still pictures? Neither? Neither? Help me, please. We got that picture. Why can't we have other pictures? No, I don't know either. All right, well, we're just going to move on from that portion of our show. It's all right. We're going old school tonight. We're going to just go. We're just going to go hilarious audio comedy, and uh, Do it. Whew, whew, it's warm up here. <laughs> it's time to take a look at the week's showbiz news, Kevin, with a segment we like to call HBO Headlines. Give me head. Give me head. Give me headlines. And give me head. <laughs> The Expendables 2 is in theaters this weekend, getting big, big box office. Some Number of one movie of the weekend, it, they said. Like, yeah. They're already talking about Expendables 3. That's how successful it is. Producer Avi Lerner was talking to The Hollywood Reporter this week, and he said he's got his uh, list of 
action stars from the past that he wants to include into the Expendables cast because it's all a, it's a draw mostly from from stars of action films gone by. You got Stallone, you got Jean Claude Van Damme, Dolph Lundgren, Schwarzenegger, Bruce Willis. I think they're they're. Their requests are a little high for the next one. He says they're already in talks with these actors to be in the next film. Really? Nicolas Cage. They want to have Nicolas Cage in. But that one I can that one I can kind of see because I'm more does. of an expendables protector. <laughs> I really want to be in your film. I think it'd be great to be expendable. <laughs> Clint Eastwood. They want to join Clint Eastwood to the... I, uh, I can't imagine that would happen, though. He doesn't need it. And he'd break a hip, more importantly. <laughs> it's halftime in America. I just shit myself. <laughs> oh. And Harrison Ford, they'd like to add to the, uh, to the cast. I don't, I, what do you, do you think he would say yes? <sighs> Mr. Church. <laughs> Producer says they'd even extend an invitation to Wesley Snipes, of course, when he's out of prison. <laughs> that I could see. I could see the Wesley Snipes. I think Clint Eastwood is shooting very high. I can't imagine he says yes. He can't do any action films anymore. The guy's, he also, the he guy's 70. And he doesn't. <laughs> but he doesn't need to. He's got another movie coming out, man. I drove past Warner Brothers. Another high, whole side yeah. of the building. It's Gotta him get... sitting in some stands at a baseball game. Yeah. That's the whole movie. That's what I'm saying. You can't do that if you're in the Expendables. You have to be able to physically lift a gun. I don't think he has that power any longer. What if, what if he was like, uh, wasn't uh, Arnold in the church in the first one? Like, he didn't lift a gun or anything, right? No, he just came in and said, Ah, nah, just go on die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to see that movie now. You think Clint's going to take that role? No, i just do it you again. You guys go out there and do that thing. No, go back to, go back to Schwarzenegger. Ah, yeah, you all are going to do it with Amazon and Python. That was awesome. Yeah. That's a picture. That's a picture. <laughs> oh, oh, it's okay. It's okay. We got, we got, some, we got some good audio here. We got uh, Taylor Swift's new song. Taylor Swift just dropped her new song this week. That talentless whore. She's got a new song out. Oh, stop. Really? All, all she does is fuck guys, break up with them, and then write about them. That's her, that's her, that's her, that's her formula for success. How do you know they fuck? Come on. I don't know. I'm, uh, she seems no woman would be that angry at a guy if she didn't fuck him. That's how I know that. She's Maybe. not writing those songs because he took back his promise ring, okay? <laughs> he fucked her and he left her, and now she's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to show you. I'm going to write a really bad country pop song about you, and that'll teach you. So she's got a new one that dropped this week called We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together Again. I shit you not. That's, That's the name really of the song. The name, really? Yes. It is as if someone opened up a 12-year-old girl's diary and just set it to music. <laughs> this woman's 22 years old, Taylor yeah. Swift now. At some point, you got to say, get the fuck over it, will you? Move on. She's dating an 18-year-old guy, by the way, one of the Kennedys, a guy named Connor Kennedy. Yeah, he's 18, she's 22? Yes. So hot. <laughs> Why she, is that hot? Because she's getting that young dick. But that shows that she's emotionally immature. What 22-year-old woman wants to be with an 18-year-old boy? And she probably boned him before he was 18, so she's also a statutory rapist. <laughs> she's a talentless statutory rapist, is what I'm saying. Let's hear the song. I want to hear it. You want to hear? We're never, ever, ever getting together <laughs> yeah. again. Ever, ever, ever. With a title like that, oh, good. It's like this. Smuckers. With a title like that, it's got to be good. Here's, here's I hope, I hope, I hope. Here's the song from Taylor Swift. I remember when we broke up the first time. Seeing this is it, I've had enough. Because, like, we hadn't seen each other in a month. change trust me remember how that lasted for a day i say i hate you we break up you call me i love you no i'm not doing that to that uh, what she didn't say we are never ever getting back well because i don't have an hour to play that song <laughs> but it's, it, trust me it's in there she gets to it oh it's just... what that's, somebody said that's not country yeah she puts the cunt in country sir i beg to differ <laughs> 
That is absolutely country. It's so weird, man. You're like, anyone who's a successful kid, I hate. I don't hate successful kids. Like I the, hate talentless successful kids. You are like the Voldemort of entertainment. Why can't you understand that? Find me that? Taylor Swift and give me her soul. First of all, you're not going to find one in Taylor Swift. <laughs> I am just against talentless kids having success. I, I like talented kids. Okay. Oh, there's got to be some. <laughs> Name some kids. I'll tell you if they're talented or not. The whip your hair back and forth. No, fuck no. Not that one. <laughs> not Willow Smith. Taylor Swift is the Willow Smith of country music. Oh. Yes. Says Ralph Garman. <laughs> she, she's, she's Hitler is what Taylor Swift is. <laughs> She's, she's Tadoff Switler. <laughs> yeah, Bieber's another one. Fucking Bieber. <laughs> However, you want to talk about talent? All right, let's get on to talent. Let's talk about another new single that dropped this week from the Octomom. That's right. Her song Sexy Party is finally available. I showed you the cover of the, of the single, I think. Oh, never mind. I was almost, uh, almost going to show you a picture. Um, yes, we, we all are a lot better off having not seen Octomom <laughs> with her tits hanging out on that. But uh, the song Sexy Party did, did get released this week. It is her new dance rap song. <laughs> and it wouldn't be right of me if I didn't play a little of Sexy Party by Nadia Suleiman. Please enjoy. <laughs> When does she sing? <laughs> she says, uh, bother me for an autograph, then, then talk trash behind my back, don't make me laugh, she says. That was her singing? I oh, thought yeah. that was like the breakdown before she comes. No, out. that's her... That's her being fucked by a robot, and uh, <laughs> she sings. She sings that, that that way the whole song. It's just it's magical. Uh, I prefer the Taylor Swift song. I have to agree. That's, uh, Kristen Stewart apparently has been dropped from plans for a Snow White sequel. Hmm. Hmm. I've heard varying versions of this story. Well, the one I read was that they're going to take Chris Hemsworth character, the Huntsman, mm -hmm. and they are going to uh, shoot him off on his spinoff. But uh, the other version I heard is they were always going to do this, even after... As Eventually. Because they, they... Well, he's money right now. They figured him, right. you know, coming off fucking Avengers, this dude, they could spin him off as just the Huntsman and yeah. stuff. So they were already talking about doing this before, you know, she was like, I love British director cock. <laughs> Or whatever she said. I believe um, those were her actual words. <laughs> yeah, there's a certain... Apparently there's a whore clause in her contract. No one knew this, but... Uh, they are going to bounce her from the project and they're going to develop Chris Hemsworth. And the funny thing is, the irony is that Rupert Sanders, the British director, may be back to direct the sequel with Chris Hemsworth. And now, he's just be. as guilty as, yeah. he, as she is, but uh, she's getting jettisoned and he might keep his job. I read an article where she was... Uh, no, that's just us. Don't, don't get excited. Here's a video of Ralph and Kevin up on the screen. No, it's, it's, it's live. It's happening. We're here. Um, so Rupert Sanders directing Chris Hemsworth. It's the, it's the Huntsman directed by the Cuntsman. <laughs> I think it's ironic. It's time for us to take a look at Kim Car... I'm sorry. Porn star, Porn star Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, who gives a fuck? Kim has another high-profile detractor this week. John Hamm has famously said that she, or, she and her family are super disgusting, which I love that quote. Uh, 007, Daniel Craig, said they're fucking idiots. This week, Jeremy Renner. Hawkeye. Hawkeye himself has come forward and said that the Kardashians, according to this interview with The Guardian, are ridiculous people with zero talent who spend their lives making sure everyone knows their name. I knew Jeremy was one of the good ones. In a related story, uh, the Kardashians released their eyewear line this week, so if you want to get their glasses, you can uh, pick them up at Sears, which is where you go for high-quality eyewear. And I imagine that's eyewear to keep cum from hitting you in the eye or something? Yes, exactly. 
your cum goggles, basically. <laughs> can't Splash guard, do that story, can't do that story. <laughs> Ooh. Let's do this story anyway, even without the video. You hear about Dave Mustaine, the lead singer for Megadeth? You heard this? Yeah. What? The what? Yeah. Well, can, can we show Katy Perry's ass then? Can we jump forward to that? No pictures, just video? All right, well, let's show Dave Mustaine. This is great. This is like... <laughs> It's on it's the like fly. a grab bag. Totally. Let's, let's show Dave Mustaine, Megadeth singer, uh, in Singapore, t t t being fucking batshit crazy. Let's show that. Because he talks about our, our president, Barack Obama, and regardless of how you may feel about the man, I'm pretty sure he's not staging shootings, which is what Dave Mustaine said this week that he was doing. You won't believe this when you hear it. Let's watch this video, hopefully. Back in my country, my president is trying to pass a gun ban, so he's staging all of these murders, like the Fast and Furious thing down at the border in Aurora, Colorado, all the people that were killed there, and now um, the beautiful people at the Sikh temple. God, I was talking to JD, our promoter here tonight. What a great guy. I was saying, you know, I don't know where I'm going to live if America keeps going the way it's going because it looks like it's turning into Nazi America. And he said, move down here to Singapore. Yeah, Dave Mustaine in Singapore said President Obama is uh, staging all those shootings. He killed the people in Aurora, Colorado and the Sikh temple. And he is, uh, he's killing Americans because he wants to ban guns. And that's why he's staging those, those killings. He's put it all together like Jessica Fletcher. <laughs> he really has figured out. Murder she wrote and shit. He said, America is turning into Nazi America. He doesn't know where he's going to live. Uh, so Singapore, live tag, Singapore. you're it. You yeah. got him now. <laughs> Singapore is an awesome place to live. You're not allowed to chew gum or spit it out. You get fined or arrested. And, or caned. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see Nazi America? Wait till they, they're caning you for your bad 80s hairdo, Dave Mustaine. <laughs> um, Wait, I want to see that story. I want to go to that story. You want to go to this story? Oh, yeah, Rashida yeah. Jones? I feel bad what for her. What is this? What you know, happened? Rashida Jones, who is on uh, Parks and Recreation, very talented, funny, yeah, funny Yeah, she was lady. in Cop Out. She's very, she's Oh, cool. that's right. Yeah, I forgot yeah, she was yeah. in that. Uh, she was in the office for a while, too. She is the daughter of Quincy Jones and Peggy Lipton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very talented woman. She's got a new movie coming out, and she was talking to a publication about the fact that she's got a lot of gay friends, and she wishes more high-profile gay people would come out. She said a movie star should come out. John Travolta, basically, she said. <laughs> she said his name? Yes. It's time, John Travolta. Come on, come out. How many masseurs have to come forward? Let's do this. I mean, she's not wrong, you know? It's, it's, it's still so weird. <laughs> so, boo. <laughs> she uh, is backpedaling furiously this week after she made that comment. She tweeted oh. on Tuesday, made a thoughtless comment about John Travolta. I sincerely apologize. Nobody's personal life is my business. That's classy. Now will the Scientologist please remove the bomb from my car, she said. <laughs> and apparently they did. Baywatch star Donna Dierico had an accident this week. She apparently was at Mount Ararat in Turkey. She was on a uh, hike and she had a major fall hurting her face and arms and legs. She was looking for Noah's Ark. Yeah, she was on an expedition looking for Noah's Ark Wait, in Turkey. With a TV show? Uh, no, no, just a group of people looking for Noah's Ark, Kevin. This is awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm sad she got hurt, but really? She took a major fall, really got hurt while uh, with her expedition, who were, by the way, if I didn't mention it, looking for Noah's Ark <laughs> in Mount Ararat in Turkey. Did she find Jesus or something? What is this? You know about? what she didn't find? Noah's Ark. <laughs> you know why? No fucking Noah's Ark. Yeah. It's just a story. Even when I was a kid in Catholic school, they told us the, like, the, the nuns would be, well, they weren't nuns, they were sisters, but they were like, Noah's Ark is a parable. Yeah. It didn't really happen. Nobody could collect two of every animal, and it's just ridiculous. It didn't rain for 40 days and 40 nights. No, and these were people in like uniforms. You they know? were wearing black. Yeah. yeah. Normally, they're chip feeding you all sorts of bullshit, but this time around, our fucking teacher was like, full of shit. <laughs> She wants to finish out the final two days of the journey before flying back to the States because apparently it takes a lot of planning, research, and permits to do this trip. 
She said she's going back next month to continue the search. Donna, let me save you some time and effort and apparently some bruising and, and, and cuts. There's no fucking Noah's Ark. <laughs> Just like you weren't a real lifeguard on Baywatch. Next up, the North Pole. <laughs> I'm gonna find Santa if it fucking kills me. That's what she said. Shia LaBeouf was sober for a while because he kept getting into uh, drunken brawls and bars. Okay, is this, do you have more Shia stuff? Uh, I, just the fact that he is drinking again. Okay. He, ha he said he had to get drunk for his role as a Prohibition-era bootlegger in the movie Lawless. I did it for the movie, he said, about falling off the wagon. Fucking, this is a great story. <laughs> I didn't drink off set for no reason. I did it because when I showed up on the set the next day, my fucking eyes looked like this and my face had that drunk bloat that I needed. And I couldn't have had it if I wasn't going on. So he had to get drunk for the movie, people. He's doing it for you. Do you appreciate that? Yes. He was so in character that his co-star, Mia Waskowska. Waskowska. Yeah. She was uh, Alice in Alice in Wonderland. Yep. She called her agent and wanted to be taken off the movie <laughs> because he was fucking drunk all the time. But he was doing it for the movie. So by fucking up the movie, he was really helping the movie, see? You're a piece of shit, Shia LaBeouf. He, uh, he's been out promoting that movie. I read an, a few uh, quotes that he gave in some interview he was talking about. Uh, remember he made some, an not anti, but... Some critical comments of Indiana Jones and, and the Crystal Spielberg. Skulls yeah. and Spielberg. Oh, there's Kevin as the star baby. 17 jokes ago. <laughs> he uh, apparently he did, like took some shit for it, man. <laughs> See, it would have been funny. Kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby Eternity. Um, he uh, he took some shit for it, and he said that. Uh, he said the Spielberg quote that he said this is what Steven Spielberg said and if he did say it I'm like oh my I mean it's a business thing you understand but it's kind of heartbreaking when he said like uh, you and know you blah, dropped blah, the blah, ball. I you dropped the ball or whatever Spielberg's comment to him was there's a time to be honest and there's a time to just sell cars wow and so he was telling him like shut the fuck up and sell this fucking Edsel. Yeah. And like, when you write your life story at the end, you can tell all the truth you want. He, that was weird, man. But that's it's. I thought it was weird that he was critical of Spielberg in the first place. Very ballsy. Yeah. But weird. But then even weirder that he like he was saying like I, we don't talk anymore. We you know he's he was obviously mad at the thing I said. And then he goes, oh by the way, he said this other <laughs> fucking thing as well. I just want to make sure we never talk again. Yeah, That's what he was doing. Um, yeah, he's. I don't know. Go read some Shia LaBeouf interviews right now. He's he is just literally. Well, he's back on the sauce, so he's interesting. Is that what's going yeah, on? That's what so, it is. Oh my god, he's just saying some shit. Harrison Ford said, "Fucking drunk." Yes. That's my new favorite addition. Lindsay Lohan in the news this week. Lindsay Lohan, why don't you come to your senses? Last year, Lindsay Lohan was broke, had no fucking money. This year, they say she's going to make close to $2 million when you add it all up. Right on. Yeah, it's not right on. I mean, at least she's not stealing it. <laughs> she's not stealing necklaces anymore? Yeah. Uh, with her Playboy gig, which was a million dollars... Plus the three hundred thousand dollars they gave her for Liz and Dick, which is more money than she's gotten for Dick in a long time. <laughs> Two hundred grand for the next scary movie installment that she's doing, plus an endorsement for Jag Jeans. I don't know what Jag Jeans are, but apparently she sells them. And then she gets two to ten thousand dollars per tweet for certain companies for doing those advertising tweets that she sends oh, out. Oh, she's one of those cats. Yeah, they say if you total it up, she's uh, she's on on the road to having two million dollars at her fingertips this year. Right on, man. That is, that'll last her a weekend <laughs> with the right cocaine dealer and the Chateau Marmont. So congratulations. Michael J. Fox is talking about coming back to television this yeah. year. Yeah. He is him. in talks with a, uh, a director, the guy who directed Easy A, which you know is a movie I love with Emma Stone and mm -hmm. Will Gluck is his name, a writer for Cougar Town. They're trying to put together a sitcom which would basically be about a celebrity dealing with a chronic illness 
and how crazy his life gets, and they would do a comedy about it. And this is, I guess, spinning off of the Curb Your Enthusiasm appearance. I and imagine. his good wife work as well, too, which is also He's been, in that, too? He has a recurring character as a, as a lawyer with Parkinson's wow. and has getting Emmy nominations for both of those roles. So he's saying maybe he'll come back to, uh, to television as someone who's suffering from that illness, and you get to watch it every week, which sounds fucking Why hysterical. not? That's like, that's... The, that. That you might as well let him if he's willing to go out there and kind of. But do you think that it would be funny every week? Yeah, I would imagine. You know, maybe he'd find a way. He, look, he, the dude's gifted. Yes. He's a strong performer. I agree. He has great comedic instincts, yes. and he's an absolute fucking pro. He's right. just unfortunately like he's got his version of a fucking cold is this thing. So for him to be able to work, <laughs> for him to be able to work through it without yelling at James and shit, I. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I see how it's going to be. I'm the bad guy. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, but I, I, I don't know. I think it'd be, I'd be into it. I bet you they could find a way to make that funny. I mean, look, that, how cool would that be if they're like, we're just going to break down this taboo and would just open up like, a whole new world for people who are performers yes. who have disabilities who yes. would like to be leads. Totally. And also, like, the dude's an actor in his heart and soul and has been for all of his life. And I imagine, like, you know, aside from the incredible inconvenience or whatever his condition carries with it, it also stops him from doing the one thing that he spent he really likes. his whole life doing. And, and yeah. for good reason, not just because, like, oh, the money's green. He fucking loved acting. So the chance for him to go back and start acting, even if it is just playing this guy or playing Parkinson's all the time, I say it, apps grab hold of it. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds a little shaky to me. Oh. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Ralph, go back in time and don't make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Doc. <laughs> and a last bit of TV news. Spike Television this week announced that they're bringing back a TV show called The Joe Schmo Show. <laughs> I can finally talk about why I had that horrible beard for a couple of weeks there in July. Uh, I am the host again of The Joe Schmo Show in January. Hey! For those of you who aren't familiar with The Joe Schmo Show, it was a spoof on reality television where we took one person who thought he was actually competing on a reality TV show and surrounded him with improvisational comic actors who were all playing roles. And we would put on a, uh, it was a put on, we would put on this entire show uh, for his benefit and at the end we would reveal to him why his world was so bizarre and so crazy and then we'd shower him with prizes and gifts and hope he didn't kill us all. <laughs> So we've done that again. It'll be on in January of next year, and I think you're all going to enjoy it. I play a, a bounty hunter <laughs> who is uh, hosting a bounty hunting reality competition show, and the winner of that show gets $100,000 and gets to be my protege bounty hunter for my bounty hunting service. <laughs> and one of the competitors is TV's Lorenzo Lamas. Who, of course, played a bounty hunter as Renegade for many seasons, and he's playing himself as a, as a competitor on the show. But he's in on the joke. Yes, he's one of the actors who knows what's going on. There's only one guy who's a, a guy, uh, who just a regular Joe Schmo the off Schmo. the street, who just comes in and he thinks he's, he's actually competing, but in reality, the whole thing's rigged. But it's not Lorenzo Schmo. Lorenzo is not the Schmo, no. <laughs> Though Lorenzo is very funny. I was is surprised. He? Very self-effacing and does a great job of playing like a Hollywood douchebag. Look at you, man. So wait, your idea of being a tough guy is growing a beard? Well, I was going to put on a hockey jersey and look really <laughs> tough. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Let's take a look at this week's geek news. Ruffin' Kevin, Ruffin' Kevin, Ruffin' Kevin. David Duchovny says he'd like to do another X-Files movie. Yeah. That's not all he'd like I to do. I bet you would, Dave. <laughs> now that you're banging Jillian. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but I still I, I want I, to believe. I want to believe, yes. <laughs> Dave Duchovny says everyone at Fox should want to do it because they have a homegrown action franchise that is excellent, he says. You don't need to invest in buying the rights for a comic book or anything. It's already good to go. It should be a summer film. It should be an action film, he said. The last one we made was not. It was a dark, contemplative film, and this yeah, one should be a little bit more one, adventurous. The last one wasn't very action film That no, was a all. thinker's film. It was. Yeah. But, and the, but to be fair, the first one wasn't really all that action The first either. one was sort of a 
tied in the two seasons. It was happening while the show was going while on. So it was a lot of it mythology. It has that awesome opening sequence with the, the, the bomb going off yeah, in the yeah. federal building and stuff. Uh, the Daredevil franchise is in danger over at Fox. There have been a lot of talk about them wanting to hold on to the rights and, and making a deal with Marvel so that they could do the film eventually. But it looks like the director that was interested, Joe Carnahan, who did The Grey and uh, A-Team, mm. he pitched them an idea of a, a Daredevil that took place in the 70s, like a hard-boiled Serpico did style. Did you watch the thing that the, he put together? The teaser, together? yeah, it was fun. He put together a, like a sizzle reel that was comprised of a lot of 70s flicks like uh, Taxi Driver and whatnot, and then a few shots from the Daredevil that Ben Affleck was in. Whoa. There's Ben Affleck now. Yeah. He's pissed. <laughs> what? They're remaking it? I'm still Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jennifer? Uh, so it looks like he has been uh, passed over as director. They're just running out of time. So it looks like the rights to Daredevil may revert back to Marvel, which may be better for everybody. They're, well, well, they're talking about giving it to them because Marvel asked for uh, Galactus and asked for some Silver Fanta Surfer. And Silver Surfer. Yeah. And Fox has Fantastic Four. And they're like, well, no, we're not, we'd rather hold on to those. But it's we'll more give of a you sure thing for them. Daredevil instead, I think, is what they've been horse trading a little bit. But that'd be, yeah. I'd prefer it if Marvel had control of all their characters at this point. They do a good they, job. They're doing a great fucking Job. Speaking of which, uh, Robert Downey Jr. injured his ankle while filming a stunt on the set of Iron Man 3. Well, they're not doing that good a job then. Apparently. Yeah, they're not taking care of their stars. So there will be a short delay in production. Apparently, they're going to have to uh, suspend production while he heals up. Oh, bummer, man. Pussy. <laughs> They've got a start date, or rather a, uh, a release date for Avengers, the next Avengers movie. Mark your calendars. Get your calendars out right now. I'm giving you the, uh, the tip. May 1st, 2015. So make sure you're not doing anything on that day. That's when we're going to see Avengers Three 2. Three fucking years, man. There's four films ahead of it. There's Iron Man 3, Kay. which is going to be delayed because he's a fucking pussy. <laughs> Um, that's in May of 2013. Four. Iron Man, porcelain ankle. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Should have wore the suit, Tony. <laughs> Thor, The Dark World, November 2013. Captain America, The Winter Soldier, May 2014. And Guardians of the Galaxy, August 2014. That's leading everything up. So. I'm, are, you, are you excited at all for Guardians of the Galaxy? I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> They've got, one of the characters is, I think it's, is it Rocket Raccoon or Rack? What is it? Rocket Raccoon? Rocket Raccoon? Literally. I mean, it looks like it'll be more kid-friendly than anything else, because most of the characters are like a big tree man, a little raccoon dude. But um, it's, it's not, when, when you think of Marvel, it's not what immediately comes to mind. I'm curious where this all fits in in the grand scheme of things. Because, right. again, as we just said before, they're doing smart things over there. But this one is, to me, a little puzzling. They must know something about Guardians of the Galaxy. Hope the raccoon that... doesn't hurt his ankle, or else it's going to throw <laughs> the schedule away the fuck off. Totally. And uh, while we're talking about movies, this is a great piece of film uh, that I hope we'll be able to show you. Um, it's on YouTube. A lot of the uh, listeners of Hollywood Babylon sent it over to us, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. It's from a, uh, a production company called Happy Dragon Pictures. They took the 1966 animated opening to the Batman TV series, and they've redrawn it for the Dark Knight franchise. So uh, we're going to show it to you tonight. It is, it's pretty amazing. You can go on YouTube and check it out. But also, I want to give credit to Happy Dragon Pictures, the people who put it together. Here's the 1966 Batman opening, updated and revamped for the Dark Knight franchise. <laughs> Well done by those Very guys. Cool. Very impressive. Of course, every week we have a musical question we like to ask you. Just how big is Liam Neeson's cock? Oh, we can't help but wonder how big is Liam Neeson's cock? 
Of course, this all stems from Kevin's fascination with the size of Liam Neeson's member. If you have a fact about his member that you know you'd like to share with the rest of us, it's uh, neesoncock.com. You can go to and add it. This is a. Uh, it our... should be a joke, by, by the way. Don't just fucking write in and be like, I hear it's veiny. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hope people understand that it's yeah, supposed yeah, to be a yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is some of our favorites from this week. Um, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. That it was the first image sent back from the Mars Curiosity rover. <laughs> Scientific. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It doesn't just have a urethra. It has urethra Franklin. <laughs> That's a big urethra. I give that joke respect. Uh. I will not file. <laughs> Tonight when you're going home on the freeway of love, you're going to say that was not a good idea. Fucking well, who's zooming who, Ralph? <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big, How big is it? that once a day he lowers a basket down his urethra and shouts to the woman at the bottom, <laughs> it rubs the lotion on its skin. <laughs> or else it gets good. the hose again. <laughs> Liam Neeson. Put the fucking lotion in the basket. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? He wasn't circumcised. He was circumsupersized. <laughs> That's cute. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It's who the Ghostbusters call. <laughs> who are you going to call? Liam Neeson's cock is so big. It hears a Horton. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? Freddie Mercury was projected on it during the Olympic closing ceremonies. <laughs> Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? When he gets a hand job, the national unemployment rate drops two percentage points. <laughs> I did not know that. Liam Neeson's cock is so big. He has developed a hands-free sex position that he likes to call Schindler's Lift. <laughs> I am so fucked up on cold medicine. <laughs> and lastly, Liam Neeson's cock is so big. How big is it? It likes pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. It is not into yoga and it has half a brain. It likes making love at midnight in the dunes on the Cape. It's the love that you've looked for. Write to it and escape. So sweet. Oh, so sweet. Ladies and gentlemen of Hollywood, have you enjoyed yourselves this evening? Thank you for putting up with all our nonsense. Thank you for bearing with us through the technical difficulties. We won't be here next week, but we will be here uh, at the John Lovitz Theater uh, the following week. I won't be here. You'll be here. Where are you going to be? You'll be here with Jay Muse. Oh, on September 1st. On September 1st, uh, we're doing Jay and Silent Bob Get Old right here at the Lovitz. But what, you're not going to be here the week after? We'll be here the 8th. I'm lost. Are yes, we? yeah. <laughs> but next week, we're not going to be here because we're going to be in Canada. Yes. Then the week after that, you're going to be here with Jason Muse. But you're not going to be here? But I won't be here, no. Are you, you're off that week. Instead of doing Hollywood Babylon, you're doing Jay and Bob Get Old. I feel like I was just woken up and somebody... <laughs> Yeah. Somebody was like, oh, you've been sleeping for it's 500 Inception. years. I just pushed yeah. you in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah, fucking the push is about that. And then happen. on the 8th, the week after that, we return with Hollywood Babylon here at the Lovitz. So you're taking a week off. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Let's just say goodnight. We shall. Yes. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, man, that is Hollywood Babylon for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Ralph Garman. Babylon, fuck off! Good Thank night, everybody! So much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kevin Smith and Ralph Garman, Hollywood Babylon Live at the Lovitz.